Anatomy of a Simple Cohort For those who wish a deeper understanding, please read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare, available through Amazon and Kindle. Let's remind ourselves what a cohort is. A cohort is a group of patients, each with a medical record number and an index date time. We showed before that the index date time is critical because all analyses are going to be done from that date time moving forward. Elapsed time is evaluated, is counted from that index date. In the previous example, we showed you that you could answer important questions, meaningful questions, of how much time elapsed before patients were brought under control using the cohort method. And if we define success as a positive result before a year, this method appropriately identified the 5 out of 10 people who actually were successes. Now, a member of a cohort is qualified by demographics. I want all males. I want all females. By genetics, and this will become more and more clear in the future, events that have already happened and the sequence of those events, temporal relativity. We will build a simple cohort where the patient is qualified only by events that have happened without any concern for demographics, genetics, or the temporal sequences of those events. So let's stop for a minute and ask, what are examples of events? A laboratory test result is an example. The fact of a hospital admission is an event. The fact of an emergency room visit is an event. Each of these events can have attributes that further specifies what they are. An emergency room visit for an asthma case, a hospital admission for congestive heart failure, a laboratory test of hematocrit or hemoglobin. Additional events include a medication prescription, the measurement of a systolic blood pressure, a reported pain score by a patient, a cardiac echo study. All these events define the patient, and the sequence of those events define a patient. But for the purpose of this simple cohort, we're going to define a patient solely by the presence of the event, and not worry about the sequence. We're going to define a simple cohort without temporal relativity. So in this particular patient group, we're going to find a group of patients who had a bone marrow performed. They had the diagnosis of monoclonal paraproteinemia, either in a hospital admission or outpatient visit. They had rheumatoid arthritis diagnosed either in a hospital admission or an outpatient visit. And once you've been qualified by all these characteristics, so that you've identified the MRN, the medical record number, of patients who had all these things, we then assign to each patient who's been qualified the date time of his bone marrow as his index date time. And if there was more than one bone marrow, it would be the first. Let's take a look at Looking Glass's representation of the cohort on Event Canvas. So, Looking Glass uses Event Canvas like an artist painting on a canvas. Looking Glass paints the rules for cohort membership on its Event Canvas. To go through it very quickly, and then we'll go into more detail, 
Here you have a series of conditions. On the first condition line, the bone marrow biopsy from 2000 to the present, age greater than or equal to 18. And evidence of monoclonal proteinemia by one of two criteria, either because it was an inpatient admission with monoclonal proteinemia or outpatient visit with the diagnosis of monoclonal proteinemia. Either one of those meet. We have evidence of monoclonal paraproteinemia. Similarly, we have evidence of rheumatoid arthritis, either by an ICD-9 diagnosis of RA in the hospital or an outpatient visit with RA. Let's go over this a little more slowly. First, let's list all the lines. Lines 1 through 7 are our condition lines on the event canvas. Line 8 is the index event line, which ultimately chooses which of these lines is going to give us a date time. So you must meet all the criteria of 1 to 7, and once you've done that, then the index event line will choose which of those lines have the event and date time that is going to be associated with this member of the cohort. Looking at line one, it's straightforward. It's a bone marrow biopsy. In 2000, age greater than or equal to 18. The next three lines, lines two, three, and four, constitute what's called a subgroup. Within the subgroup, indented, you can see, are two criteria. Either an inpatient admission with an ICD-9 diagnosis of monoclonal proteinemia or an outpatient visit. Inpatient admission with ICD-9 paraproteinemia or an outpatient visit. And once you have that in the subgroup, you then have the group index line, which chooses which of those events, if there's more than one event, is representative of this patient. The subgroup index line says, I want the earliest of either of these two events. It also states that the condition between these two condition lines is an or rather than an and. For the rheumatoid arthritis, to remind you, we want to know that you've had rheumatoid arthritis either because there's an inpatient admission with an ICD-9 code of RA or an outpatient visit with an ICD-9 code of RA. This is condition line 6 and 7 of the event canvas. And condition line number 5 is a group index line. You can see the group with the parentheses. This is done before anything else on the canvas. And you can see that if a patient has both an inpatient RA, an outpatient RA, or more than one, the group index line will select the earliest one of these two. It's also saying that within the subgroup, there's an OR condition between these two lines. And once conditions 1 through 7 are met, the index event line says that we are going to go to the bone marrow line to find the date time to be associated with a patient. The patient is qualified by all these events, and we say the event that will ultimately represent this patient is going to be the bone marrow and it's going to be the earliest bone marrow. So we've built a very simple cohort. We end up, at the end of the day, with a list of MRNs and a list of date times. We also end up, frankly, with the event that defined this date time. And we'll see how useful that is going forward. Suggested reading, Riddles in Accountable Healthcare, a primer to develop analytic intuition for medical homes and population health.
by Ron Bellin. You can find it on Amazon and in Kindle.